everybody, welcome back to the Epic Flight Academy. This is the Private Pilot Ground School and I'm Mike Thompson. Remember to be successful in this course, don't just watch these videos. These videos parallel Epic's online learning program and thirdly, you have to review this material one-on-one -on -one with your flight instructor. So what's our topic today? Today we're going to talk about an interesting and very important topic, turning flight. How do I turn the airplane? Now, there are three primary flight controls, as you recall from an earlier lesson. We have three axes and three flight controls. Let's just do a quick review. The lateral axis goes wingtip to wingtip. The elevators pitch the aircraft around the lateral axis. The longitudinal axis goes from the nose to the tail and the ailerons roll the airplane around the longitudinal axis and thirdly, the vertical axis goes up and down and the rudder yaws the airplane around the vertical axis. Well, why do I mention that with turning flight? Because to properly turn the airplane in level flight, we need to use all three of these primary flight controls. Now, this is nothing like driving a car or steering a boat. If that's what's in your mind, you have to remind yourself in the aircraft, you're operating in three dimensions. It's different than driving your car or steering a boat. Move yourself from the two-dimensional world to the three-dimensional world, and I'm going to explain to you how you need all three primary flight controls. So here's a diagram of the aircraft in straight level flight. We're going to start a turn. The way we do that is we roll the aircraft with the ailerons. Once we roll in those ailerons, you're going to see that the downward deflected aileron has a higher angle of attack, creates more lift, and lifts that wing, rolling the airplane about the longitudinal axis. Now remember what we talked about, when we create more lift, we create more induced drag. Now when that high wing in that turn is creating more lift, it's creating more induced drag and it's being pulled back, yawing the nose of the airplane to the outside of the turn. Here's where I need to apply my second primary flight control and that's the rudder to yaw that nose of that airplane back to the left. In this case, we're in a left turn. So far, I've used two of my primary flight controls, ailerons to initiate the roll and rudder because I use the ailerons. Now, if that's all that I do, this airplane rolled onto its left side will start a gradual descent. But remember, we wanted a level turn. So here comes my third and final primary flight control. I have got to increase back pressure on the elevators to create this horizontal component of lift. That lift acting horizontally is what turns the airplane. The airplane was rolled into this position with the ailerons and the rudder corrected adverse aileron yaw. But it was these elevators that created that additional lift to give me that horizontal vector. So to turn the aircraft,
I have to use all three primary flight controls. And in fact, it is the elevator that gives me the horizontal component that causes the airplane to turn. Now, before we leave this topic, let's just talk a little bit about steep and shallow turns. <clears throat> As I roll the airplane to about a 30 degree bank, what you're going to notice is that at a 30 degree bank, the overbanking tendency and the aircraft's dihedral balance each other out and the aircraft doesn't want to continue the bank and it doesn't want to shallow. It'll just sort of stay there. It'll stabilize in a medium bank. That means I can neutralize the ailerons. Well, if I can neutralize the ailerons, then I don't need the rudder. So in a medium bank turn, my ailerons and rudder are neutralized and I'm holding the turn with the elevators. Now, I just mentioned steep turns and overbanking, and I mentioned shallow turns. Let's review those. In a shallow turn, I'm not producing a lot of excess lift on this high wing, just enough to raise the wing. And as you look at this shallow turn, I want you to think back to our discussion on stability, static stability, and dihedral. In a shallow turn like this, dihedral and those stabilizing tendencies of the airplane will actually cause the airplane to roll back toward level, which is what we want in a stable airplane. Now, overbanking tendency is when I have a steep bank on the aircraft and the high wing now has a greater airspeed through the air than that low wing does. That greater airspeed causes that high wing to create more lift and actually in the bank, or we call it overbanking. To control the airplane in a steep bank, we as pilots actually put in a little bit of opposite aileron. Now, this is perfectly correct and normal, and it's how we fly a steep turn. Your flight instructor will work with you on that. So, here's a review question for today's lesson. When I make a level turn, we know that we have to use all three primary flight controls. Which of those three flight controls is actually turning the airplane? Well, folks, that's it for today. We'll see you next time.